Well, good afternoon, folks. Um, first of all, I apologise for my accent. It's a little bit strange, and uh, it's from across the pond, as you can probably gather. Sometimes I find as well that things I say in my mother tongue don't quite carry across to the other side of the Atlantic, so I do apologise if I use slightly strange terminology. Uh, but my name is Howard Long, uh, my call sign is G6LVB, and uh, little did I think 15 years ago when I started in amateur satellites that it would come to this, but um, there we go. Um, as you may be aware, the um, FunCube satellite was uh, launched recently, uh, about six months ago, and uh, the original project started off uh, around about 2009, and uh, <coughs> back then we thought, oh, we'll get this thing up in about a year and we'll have done with it. And it's, good, it's a good target to keep to because saying you're going to do something in a year means you can keep minds focused, and, uh, and we have noticed it in a team which started off about with about half a dozen of us, you, you do get people who, uh, not many, but you'll find people quite often lose interest part way through or don't turn up to meetings and whatever, but, but trying to maintain uh, a level of interest uh, over five years is, is always uh, challenging, shall we say, and um, the project managers on the team will will tell you all about that, I'm sure. Um, this is a, actually a presentation that uh, Graham Sherbel, G3VZB, has given me. I've tried to talk, to, talk, him, talk through the slides with him. Uh, unfortunately, he's been unavailable to talk to, so I do apologise if I don't have all the answers for you. Um, I'm going to go through some of the slides quite rapidly because a lot of you know about CubeSats uh, already, but it's the uh, same as, as the Fox satellite in that it's um, uh, a one U. CubeSat. Um, and uh, <coughs> what we did was we teamed up with the AMSAT DL, the uh, sorry, AMSAT NL, the Dutch uh, satellite uh, AMSAT. And uh, in fact, I don't think they, they actually technically existed at the beginning. AMSAT NL was, was actually designed just, to, just for this project. And the reason for that was, was that in the UK we have problems with uh, uh, regulatory requirements for launching satellites. So um, <coughs> AMSAT NL uh, got us through that. Now, uh, when it was launched from Russia, uh, what I will say is that it was launched on the NEPA launch. Uh, which is an old ICBM, and I have to say, on the day of the launch, uh, we were just thinking, oh yeah, well, if it comes out, it comes out, and if it doesn't deploy, it doesn't deploy, and, you know, how accurate can these things be? You know, it's rocket science, very hard. But actually, on the day of launch, let me tell you, uh, there were a number of other satellites on this launch, and they came out absolutely on time. These guys know what they're doing. And um, when, when it... Uh, went into its, uh, its orbit, uh, pretty much everything, how it was designed to, to orbit, everything was pretty much what it said on the tin uh, during the uh, original design of the launch. And um, what we decided, the original part of the design of the, of the satellite was that not only does it have an amateur payload, it also has an educational outreach payload. And uh, for that, that's, a, that's re ground station receive only, so a small station on the ground can receive it. Um, <coughs> And uh, what we did for that was we decided to, because it's a downlink only, we could, you have some telemetry on there um, for people to be able to receive with handheld transceivers. And uh, so during the time that the satellite's in what we call daylight, um, that will transmit telemetry. And then when it gets to night time, when potentially the people who are interested in the science and technology and engineering are probably not at school, we thought we'd switch to the amateur payload. So when it's in eclipse, in general, it switches over to being a, a ham radio transponder, a linear transponder. So uh, when it's operating in the, what we call the educational mode with telemetry only, it's operating about 300 milliwatts on the downlink and, uh, and it's loud. You can, you can hear that with a handheld receiver. Um, let's see if I can go through these a bit quick. Oh yes. One, uh, one of the things that we have with it, it also is uh, uh, the software side to it. So there's a, a piece of software you can run on your PC that which will connect to your radio receiver, whatever that may be, and uh, it will collect the telemetry. That also then connects to a remote data warehouse 
so it can collect all that telemetry so all the all the stations around the world can contribute uh, the data to, to our telemetry data warehouse and we can use that to provide uh, information about the status of the satellite. So even if uh, you're uh, a ground receiver, uh, so even if you don't have a ground receiver, you can still see what the satellite is doing, um, almost real time. Oh, I should mention something about the uh, fitter messages. What we did is play on words between Funcube and Twitter. So uh, also as part of the educational outreach, we wanted people to be able to put small messages on the satellite. And these are small, 100 or so character long messages that can be requested to put on a satellite. So for example, if you have a school in New Zealand wants to talk to a, a school in Dayton, they can leave a little message for them. And uh, we'll upload that to the satellite and the um, uh, school in Dayton can, can receive it. So hello from Auckland uh, Kindergarten and uh, Kindergarten in Dayton receives that signal. And again, either they can receive it themselves with their own little uh, receiver, or they can use the, the data warehouse to do that. Uh, because that information will have been uploaded by other amateurs around the world, or indeed, uh, not necessarily amateurs, but, but uh, other receiving stations. Um, part of the... Uh, one of the special things about the uh, Funky satellite is that it has a science experiment in it, which is uh, showing how uh, radiation of... Uh, uh, black body radiators it, as compared to a, a silver, a reflective uh, radiator is on there, which is our material science experiment on there. And uh, I'm just going to go show you a bit about launch day here. And uh, this was done at Bletchley Park, which was, um, I don't know if, uh, it's certainly famous in the UK. Um, it uh, was where in World War II uh, the decryption of, uh, of things like the Enigma machine was taken place. And uh, although they didn't have any radio stations there, they had a lot of people with, with very pointy heads um, uh, during the war, figuring out what all this meant. And uh, it's also home to the National Radio Centre, which is by the RSGB, that's a national uh, amateur radio uh, society. And uh, also it's uh, home to uh, the National Museum of Computing, where they have some very old computers in there, uh, including a, a, a a computer which I originally programmed back in 1976 as well, which is uh, with paper tape. Um, this was the mon monitoring station at Bletchley Park on the day at the National Radio Centre. So you're all grouped around a ton of monitors. It's not quite mission control, but it felt like it on the day. And uh, you see the bottom right picture there, that was when we got our first telemetry. Now, the beauty was, was that it wasn't flying over us, it was flying over South Africa, but because of the uh, telemetry warehouse where there was all the data centralised, there was a station in South, uh, South Africa who happened to be picking it up, uploaded the data, and immediately we saw it straight there. And of course, you can imagine the uh, whoops of delight and uh, a few other comments as well, which were uh, not, not uh, for public... Uh, <laughs> for the public's ears um, and this is a picture here now I don't think this is actually going to play here oh it is going to play this was on the third orbit uh, and this was I walked out of uh, the National Radio Centre and uh, I uh, got my HT which is a, a THF6 which will receive single sideband and uh, hopefully this will work Can you hear the beep? Every five seconds you get a beep. Oh. Now that, that was recorded on an iPhone. And what we did was after recording that with an iPhone, this is an acoustic recording, there was no cable between that and the iPhone. We then plugged that into a computer. So it's gone through the air, as in acoustic, then it's been encoded into AAC with an AAC codec, then played back through the iPhone into the microphone socket of a computer, and it still decoded the telemetry. So we were pretty happy with that. Uh, and this is uh, some of the status that you can see of the, of the satellite uh, in real, real time. I think this is the first frame that we had that we could see what was going on. Um, this is some information about the receivers you can use. Um, 
you can, <coughs> with regards to, to, the, to the antenna, I mean, you can receive on a quarter wave or even that rubber, uh, rubber ducky that I had there. Of course, if you want to go for a, a, a more sophisticated antenna, you're going to receive more frames, less errors. Um, and uh, <coughs> you can use a conventional SSB VHF receiver. Um, there's something there you might have heard I call a fun cube dongle. Not quite sure what they are, but... Um, uh, oh, I should mention about the fun cube dongle, by the way. Um, I, I haven't brought any with me today. Um, uh, the reason is, is that I, I had difficulty last year getting them through customs. So uh, they are available, and I'm doing free shipping at the moment until Monday. So if you want to purchase them, uh, please go online to the Funcube Dongle uh, .com website, and it's free shipping at the moment. Um, this is the, the dashboard software which connects to your receiver and shows you the real-time telemetry being downloaded. Again, th this, is, this is not the same as the warehouse. This is actually what you're, you're receiving yourself in real time. Um, this shows some of the fitter messages, so those messages that I mentioned to you earlier on, which you can use, uh, small uh, messages can be sent around the world. Uh, you can also use it for, for graphical display. That show, that's showing uh, the Doppler of the pass, and also there's a little dot there where it's actually managed to receive a frame. Uh, there's some more telemetry there, which I think it is, uh, is the various solar panels when they're, um, it's the current from the solar panel, the voltage from the solar panel, one of the two. Um, there you'll see, uh, again on the dashboard, this is the, uh, I can't remember what it is. Oh, the total system current. Um, so you'll see there, when it's uh, in, in sunlight, uh, it's quite a, a large current draw, that's because you're running at the full 300 milliwatts. And then you'll see it drop down during Eclipse. Now that bit in the middle there is when somebody's talking through the transponder. Um, and then it goes back up when we go, in, go back into sunlight, it goes back up to full power mode. Uh, some more stuff there, I'm running out of time there, so I'm just going to zip through these. Uh, the data warehouse, which, which accumulates all this data over time. and. <coughs> That shows you uh, uh, where all the people are who have been adding data to the data warehouse throughout the world. Uh, of course, this is something which um, has been done before, um, but I'm not sure it's been done in such an integrated way uh, as this. And this, is, this data warehouse is now set up for future satellites as well. And there's some information here about how we're using in the, in the classroom. We actually have this on the curriculum uh, now in the UK for some, uh, for some schools in, it's within their examining curriculum uh, for what they call key stage four, which is between 14 and 16 years old. And we're uh, trying to expand that to, to greater, air, um, greater age ranges. And even without a receiver, you can use the information from the data warehouse, download it and use it in order to be able to uh, fulfill the requirements uh, for things like orbit determination and uh, the, the black body radiation experiments as well. Oh, so I'll zip through these because I'm running out of, out of uh, time now. Lots of education outreach, as you can see. We've noticed that the, the satellite keeps uh, uh, slowing down and speeding up in its spin rate. Uh, so it got up to, um, I think this is... Yeah, it's currently slowing down, I think, at the moment. Uh, but then it decides it's going to speed up again. Now, I, I don't know enough to be able to explain that away, but I'm sure there are some people who are very clever who can explain why that happens. But it's an interesting thing to, to be able to measure. Uh, some lessons learned could go to all of these. But probably the best thing out of the whole project is that we've, we've been really lucky to have a, a, a bunch of, a core bunch of about half a dozen to, to ten people who've, who've managed to contribute throughout. Um, we have some people who come and go, but uh, there's been a core set of people who have always been available. We have a month, a, a weekly meeting over Skype, and um, we're still learning to this day, uh, that's for sure. Um, we have three more missions that we're involved with. Um, the FunQ2, which is on uh, the UK or UCube, which is the UK Space Agency's um, satellite, um, who reckoned they were going to be the first UK CubeSat into space, but actually we beat them to it. Um, there's FunQ3 on QB50, and uh, there's also ESIA, which is a, a project that's been going on, must be for, well, 
seven or eight years from, from ESA and um, it keeps getting quiet and then raising its, its head again. So uh, um, those are the uh, follow-on missions there and um, some thanks there, uh, Bob Quig Twigs who came up with the CubeSat project, Phil Kahn who, who did the, uh, was the original uh, designer of the telemetry uh, encoding there. Uh, I should say, actually, that was exactly the same as what's on the AO40, except we speeded it up uh, by three times. Um, of course, all listing stations, we provide the telemetry, which really helps us manage the satellite, um, and all, all of you, really, for, for your, all your support. And um, hopefully you'll have a chance, if you haven't already, to have a listen to it. It's really, really easy to hear. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>